OK, so obviously, you're here in the right place because you are on roll, so that's a good sign. There looks like there's a few spaces. We'll see how it shakes out, but I know uh, there's a couple of you on the wait list that want in, so we'll do our best to, to make sure you get in. We are here for Archie 135. It's the fall 2018 semester. This is probably your first class, correct? Hopefully you all had a wonderful summer. It was way too short <laughs> for me too. But here we are, we're back. Uh, we've got a 16-week semester coming at you. Uh, it should be an exciting semester. I've got a lot planned to try to get through, uh, but that's the nature of a college class, right? So let's, uh, let's get rolling here. So first off, a little bit about me and who I am and why I'm here, et cetera. This is my 11th year, shocking, teaching this class. So I was hired way back when to teach this particular class. I was a grad student at uh, UC Berkeley, so I have my Master of Architecture degree from Berkeley. I also have my undergraduate degree from Berkeley as well, so I have a Bachelor of Arts in Architecture, which is the four-year unaccredited architecture degree. For those of you that are just starting out in the field of architecture, it's complicated. There's a bunch of different degrees, but for those of you that have kind of thought through this a little bit, the unaccredited four-year degree is a very common degree. And a lot of you, if you stick with this, will end up going to Berkeley and will end up getting that particular degree. There's nothing wrong with the degree. It's a great degree. It just means that you end up getting a master's degree, too. If you go the other route, if you went to a Cal Poly, for example, you would go to a five-year accredited program and get a Bachelor of Architecture degree. So slightly different, meaning you could go practice architecture without a master's degree. Most of those people go get their master's degree anyway. If you add it up, 5 plus 1 is the same as 6 plus 2. You get the same amount of time you all end up with a master's degree. So it really doesn't make any difference. So my background is from Berkeley. Uh, I spent a, a bunch of time at UC Berkeley doing my studies. After grad school, I got hired to teach this particular class, RT135, which is the crossover between computers and architecture. Um, it's evolved a lot since that first time that I taught it, which I think is a good thing. So what I try to do really uh, in, this in this course is I try to distill out those things that are absolutely essential that I think you need to know going forward for these computer programs. It's not necessarily comprehensive. Could we spend, could you take a whole semester and just study Photoshop? Absolutely. Easy to do that. Could you spend a whole semester just studying InDesign? Sure. No problem. However, if I give you those things that are absolutely essential, you can get a bunch of the software really mastered and then you can use it in your studio classes, which is my goal. So a lot of what we do is prepping you for your design classes going forward. How many of you are in 121 this semester? Fewer than normal. Either that or you don't want to admit it. Okay? A lot of people take 121 at the same time they take 135. It's a good combination. The skills help each other out. If you've moved on a little bit past that, that's OK too. This stuff will still help you out quite a bit. So I'm an associate professor here at DVC, which means that I work here two days out of the week. So I'm here on Mondays, and I'm here on Wednesdays. If you look for me on the other days, I won't be here. Okay? I have a um, whole business outside of this realm. Uh, I'm actually developing a multifamily building uh, set, of, set of buildings in Lafayette right now. So I'm out on a construction site doing real work, et cetera, as part of my job. That is my real job. This is for fun, right? Um, so I'm busy with that. However, you're more than welcome to email me anytime. I can't promise that I'll get back to you right away, but I'll try. So I have two email addresses that you, either one will get to me. They actually get forwarded into the same email address. gadams at dvc.edu is my school-sponsored email address. You can email me there. Or grant at digitaltoolsforarchitects.com. You can email me there as well. Either way will get to me, uh, and I'll try to get back to you. I also have a phone number here listed. Chances are, if you call me, I probably won't answer. Just saying. However, a lot of you like texting, I'm assuming. So if you text me, there's a pretty good chance I will answer. Okay? So you can text me on that number, no problem. Um, it'll get to me. If I don't answer, I'm busy. I try my best. Okay? Office hours. So we have this screwy schedule this semester, this whole 755 thing. I didn't make up the schedule. So my office hours on Monday are before this class, 6.55 to 7.55. Most of you should be able to come during that time if you need to talk to me, because there shouldn't be another conflicting class. I teach the Digital Tools uh, for Architects class 136 right after this class. 
So it starts right afterwards, which means I can't have office hours after this class. So I can't talk to you after class. To accommodate that class, I also have office hours on Wednesdays in the afternoon, but it's after that second class. So that goes from 2.15 to 3.15. You're more than welcome to come to that office hour too. Doesn't matter which one you come to, I'm here, but I try to straddle it so that you guys have access and they have access. Some of you might have conflicting classes or whatever. Generally speaking, if I'm here on campus, even if it's not my official office hour, I'm more than happy to actually talk to you about something. And if you ask around and, and you've, uh, you've been around, you've probably seen me floating around answering random questions and, and that sort of thing. So if I'm here on campus, I'm absolutely happy to, to help and talk, et cetera, even if it's not my official office hours. Clearly, I talked too long on that screen. Continuing. Um, chances are, if I'm not in this room, which is 103 slash 104 slash 108, depending on which map you look at on campus, uh, I'm in my office, which is 104B, which is right across the hallway in there. So you'll find me in one of those two places in all likelihood. So there's a course website for this class. It is not the Canvas website that you guys are used to that a lot of your other classes run on. I don't use Canvas. I never have. Um, it's a separate website. I pay for it. I host it. It has a lot more content on it than a Canvas site could have, in my opinion. So it's digitaltoolsforarchitects.com. If you typed in digitaltoolsfordesigners.com, you get to the same place. Um, technically, this class is Digital Tools for Design. The other class is Digital Tools for Architects. It's all the same website. You'll need to visit the website to view your exercises and your assignments, all the handouts that I create, the syllabus, all of that's available on it. So I'll give you paper copies, but if you lose it or you're absent for a day or whatever, you can get all that information on the website. Important course information like the calendar, what's going on, what the lectures are, all that's there. Um, you'll post all of your exercises and your assignments to the course website. Um, today you'll make your first post, so you'll learn how to do the post. It may seem a little challenging at first. I promise you within a week, maybe two weeks, it'll become really easy. And you'll just go through it and it'll be easy. Uh, I also have a bunch of tutorials, videos, walkthroughs uh, that are all written up on the website too. So if you get lost or you're at home trying to remember what I talked about, you can go back and look at those kinds of things. So I'm trying to make it as accessible as possible so you guys can get the information in any way that really works for you. The other thing that's great about the website is it's public so all of you can see everybody else's work. You can also see everybody's work from last semester and, well, for that matter, almost 11 years worth of work if you go back far enough. Some of the links don't work anymore, but that happens. This is what the website looks like. Uh, a lot of you have seen it already. I'll go through it in a little bit more detail uh, a little bit later on in the lecture. So our class schedule here, uh, there's a calendar. It's on the website. We'll go through calendars a little bit more next class. So I'm not overly worried about it just yet, but there is a calendar. You can subscribe to it in your own calendar and it'll populate all the lecture titles and what you're doing and all the exercises, et cetera. The nice thing about that is if I make a change, it'll change and reflect in your calendar as well. So I don't actually print it, it's a digital calendar. But our schedule is Mondays and Wednesdays. We will do the lecture portion from 7.55 to 8.55-ish. So technically it's about an hour of lecture. I don't make promises that my lecture will end exactly at 8.55. Um, it tends to fluctuate. Towards the end of the semester, I have more information to try to get through. It might go a little bit longer. In the beginning of the semester, it might be a little bit shorter. So it just varies a little bit. The balance of the time, so in this case from 8.55 to 11, is your lab time. And we'll talk about what we do during lab time uh, as we go forward. So if I end a little bit early, you just get a little bit more lab time. If I end a little bit late, you get a little bit less lab time. I try to adjust how much you need to do in lab based on how long my lecture is going to be. So you should finish whatever it is that I'm requiring you to do in lab during that time. I've thought through it. I know how long the lecture is going to last. You should be able to finish. Those are my office hours. Again, we already talked about that. It's a little bit redundant. So what exactly are we going to cover in this class? What software are we going to cover? What are we going to learn? We're going to start uh, with Adobe Photoshop. I think it's the easiest kind of gateway into the Adobe suite to learn. It's pretty self-explanatory. A lot of you have already played around in Photoshop. So it shouldn't be too hard. I'm going to teach you some stuff that you don't know, is my guess. In very rare cases, somebody's a master in Photoshop, in which case you get an easy pass on the first one. For most of you, you learn a lot. We'll do digital photography. We'll do a lot about collage and how do you bring things together? How do you make things match up and look like they're real? How do you fake things? 
Then we'll move into, well, this is a little bit out of order because we're going to do InDesign next, but we'll cover Adobe Illustrator, which is a graphic design program. We'll do a lot with that, logos and that sort of thing. Then we'll do um, InDesign, well, I should go in order. I should change this slide so that they're in the order that we're going through. We will cover AutoCAD. Now, how many people have taken a class in AutoCAD before? OK, a lot of you. That's good. So AutoCAD is the kind of thing where you really need probably a semester to learn AutoCAD, to really learn AutoCAD, maybe a year to really learn AutoCAD. I'm going to cover AutoCAD for two and a half, maybe three weeks. So it's hard. I can't give you all of AutoCAD in that short of amount of time. However, like I said, I'm going to try really hard to pick the parts that are most important for you to learn about AutoCAD and make sure you learn those parts. So we'll cover some stuff in the AutoCAD section that my guess is, even if you took an AutoCAD class, you didn't cover. And so we'll go through that. We'll spend a little bit of time in AutoCAD getting you prepped up and ready for AutoCAD. We'll do some SketchUp work. Most of you, how many people have played in SketchUp before? You guys are either all shy or you're not telling the truth. Okay, a large part of you have played in SketchUp before. I remember when I first started teaching the class, I would say, how many people have, have played in SketchUp before? And everybody look at me with a blank face, like, what? <laughs> Times have changed. Most of you already played in SketchUp. We'll do some SketchUp work. We will concentrate, however, not so much on how to model in SketchUp, though if you're unfamiliar with SketchUp, don't worry, I will teach you how to model in it, but more how do you get good quality graphics out of SketchUp? How do you make SketchUp look good? So we'll talk a lot about that process as part of it. And then uh, InDesign, which is the last on my list, which is very much the, the gold standard of layout programs. How do you do presentations? How do you do boards? How do you do posters? How do you do books? All of that stuff is what we will cover in the InDesign section of the course. There is a textbook for the course. It's the Digital Tool for Architects Handbook. It looks like this. It's available. Uh, it's a print-on-demand book. So if you order it today, it'll take a week for them to do it. It's not like Amazon where it magically shows up the next day. Uh, it'll take a little bit of time because they print it when you want it. Um, it is listed as the course textbook in the bookstore, I believe, but it's not available in the bookstore because you have to buy it online because it's a print-on-demand sort of thing. If you've already taken my 136 class, it's the same book. So don't worry about it. You only have to do it once. If you're taking this, you will probably end up taking 136, in which case you get to use this book for that. Um, the current version, I think this is an older one. The current version is 5.0.1, I think. It doesn't matter if you have a slightly older version, it'll be, it'll be just fine. Um, this is very helpful for you because it has written out all kinds of step-by-steps for the stuff that I'm talking about. These step-by-steps, I will go through live in lecture. They're on the website, but there are, this is also a printed version for you to go back to. I've found in the past that people like to take notes in the margins of this book as their way of kind of taking notes as I'm talking because you can go back. Let's say you move on, you're at Berkeley, and you're remembering, oh, yeah, he did that thing where he did that mask. And how did he do that? You can go back to your notes and remember how I did it. Okay, So that's the book. Um, if you can Google or search for a Lulu coupon code or something like that, free shipping, whatever, try to get that. All right, That's the publisher. You, if you can get a discount, by all means, do it. There is another book that is not a required textbook by any means, but I like to bring it up because I think it's incredibly valuable. It's Kristen Cullen's Layout Workbook, it's this book here. Um, it is not, the reason it's not a required text for this particular class is because it's really only applicable to the InDesign section of the class, which is only two or three weeks. So I don't want you to have to go out and buy it. However, you don't have a giant chemistry textbook to buy for this class. You don't have a lot of supplies to buy for this class. So if you have a little bit of extra money in your school book budget, this is a great, great book that will help you do your layouts and your graphic design stuff. So it's there. It's an option. Um, I have my copy. You're more than welcome to borrow it and look at it. But when we get to that InDesign section, this can be really useful for you as well. So it's recommended, but not required. So let's talk a little bit about grading. Everybody always wants to know how the grades work. So grading's pretty easy in this class. It's based on four different things. Number one, your lab exercises. And we'll talk about what each of these kind of mean in just a second. I've got slides that diagnose them. We've got lab exercises. They're worth 20% of your overall grade. We have your assignments, which are worth 40% of your overall grade. 
we have your final. So we don't have a test in this class. We have a final portfolio that you're going to turn in. That's worth 30% of your overall grade. And then that last item here is 10% participation. Are you here? Are you doing your work, et cetera? That's important. It's worth 10%. I try really hard in this class to make the workload even. So you, you know, you've been, how many people have been in a studio light class before? Like maybe 120, 121, something like that. You know in a studio class you have days where it's like, how am I going to survive because I, can't, I don't have enough time to sleep or eat or do anything because I have to do all this work? And then you finish your project and it's like, oh, I'm going to sleep for two days because I haven't slept in a month. You have those kinds of cycles. Okay? In this class, it's not about that. It's about even as possible. A lot of the work you'll have time to do in class, though that got shortened a little bit because they shortened the semester. So uh, there'll be a little bit more work that's required outside. But I try to keep it nice and even, nice and level, so that you just come in, you do your work, and you move on. You don't have those big spikes. And that means it's a great class to take at the same time as you're taking a class with those big spikes, because you can kind of count on this being rather consistent. So let's talk about each of these in a little bit more depth so you understand what they are uh, and how they're going to work. First off is lab exercises. These are that 20% of your overall grade in the class. They're designed to be completed during the lab section. So remember, we have lecture first, then we have lab. During the lab section, you guys are going to be working on something specific, this exercise. It's going to be relevant to what I talked about that particular day. It should take you approximately the amount of time left after lecture to finish. It's due that day at the end of the lab period. So for you guys, it'll be due at 11. And that's different than previous semesters. Remember, the time schedule thing changed. So this class doesn't, yes, the old class used to end at 11, but it really ended at 10.50. So you had 10 minutes before your class to move classes and whatever. This class actually ends at 11. The next class starts at 11.10. Go figure. Okay. So yours will be due at 11. You'll need to post it on the course website. Um, and the way that I do this is it's graded on a pass, not pass system. You do it, you get 100%. You don't do it, you get a zero. Seems pretty simple. So if you're here, you do it, 100%. You're not here, you don't do it, zero. Doesn't matter how it turns out. And that's really important. The lab exercise is designed for you to experiment, for you to learn, for you to try things out without the risk or the fear of, oh, I'm going to fail or I'm going to do it wrong. You play around with it. If it doesn't work and it looks awful, you're still going to get credit and you still learn during that lab period. That's really, really important for you to understand. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be figured out. You have to figure out how to do it because you're going to need these skills when you get to the assignment, which are graded. So this is your way of experimenting. So feel free to do that. You will not be punished for it. You get 100% or you get zero. Very easy. I should also mention that somehow, some way, during the course of the semester, at least once for every one of you, you'll just forget to post it. Happens. Okay? I'll give you guys a pass on that. So you forget to post it, you just post it later, I'll still give you the 100%. If you make a habit of doing it, or like you just stop turning it in for a while, that's kind of problematic. And we'll do a, a late penalty on that. But for the most part, you miss a few. As long as you turn them in, I'm happy. We just want you to stay, stay current, stay caught up, etc. Assignments. So these are worth 40% of your overall grade. So a bigger percentage of your overall grade. They'll probably be six over the course of the semester, though I haven't officially determined how many we'll have, but I'm guessing they'll be six. Each of those um, will stack together to end up being 40%. So uh, if you divide 40 by six, you get whatever the percentage is each for each particular assignment. Assignments are graded based on the skills that you used, but also the overall product. How did it turn out? Did you, does, it, does it look good from a design perspective? If we look at like a, um, a lecture series poster, did you use all the principles that I've been talking about for graphic design? And how did it turn out? Did you pick good color combinations? Did you pick the right fonts? All of those things feed into, is this a good final product? You can also, let's say you turn in um, that, that assignment. It's a lecture series poster. You turn that in, and I grade it, and you get a C on it. You're like, ooh, I didn't like that. That wasn't what I thought. I made some mistakes. You can choose to regrade that assignment. You can do it only once, 
but you can do it over again and you can submit it to me. At the end of the semester, so I won't do it before the end of the semester, after all, everything's been completed, I'll go back and look at anybody that turned in any regrades, I'll regrade it as if I never saw it, your first one. So it's not based on did you improve your first one, it's as if the first one never even happened. So it's like a do-over, for lack of a better term. So you can do that for each one of the assignments. You can't do it for the exercises, just the assignments. So you can do it potentially five or six times. It's pretty hard on the last assignment to get a redo on it because it's at the end of the semester anyway. So you can do that five or six times, once for each assignment, but your grade on the first non-redone version stands until the end of the semester. So I won't regrade until the very end of the semester. It also means that you can't do it more than once, if that makes sense. So you turn in the first assignment, you don't like it, you can regrade that assignment, but I won't touch it until the end of the semester. So you're stuck with that grade until the very end of the semester. Please note that your grade can go up or it can go down. And I think this is the only way of doing it fair. It's not an automatic, you just boost your grade because you redid it. I pretend like your first one didn't happen. You submit it in hopes that your grade goes up. If you did a worse job, it can go down. Chances are you did a better job. It's just, just a hunch. But I like to put that out there, that it is possible to do worse. All regrades will occur at the end of the semester. When you make your post for a regrade, make sure it's really obvious. So assignment 101 dash regrade. So when I'm looking through your work, it's easy to see, oh, that's a regrade, and I'll go back and do it. It doesn't matter when you post it. You can post it on the last day of the semester. You can post all your regrades, or you can post it as you go along, as long as it's really obvious that it's a regrade. If you have questions about it, we can talk about it when it gets closer. You know, this is one of those things you go over all this stuff in the beginning of the semester, and everybody forgets everything anyway. Final portfolio. This is the final project for the class. We don't have a test at the end of class. I don't say, okay, everybody's going to sit down, and we're going to do clipping masks in Illustrator, and I'm going to grade you on it. It doesn't work that way. You get a final portfolio in this class. There'll be specific requirements for what you're doing. It's worth 30% of your overall grade. That's a significant chunk. So if you got 100% on everything else that you've done in the class, you would go into this final having a C. So this matters. The other thing about it is it's not something that we're going to spend an inordinate amount of time working on and slaving over in class. This is your final for this class. It is how good are you at these tools? How can you assemble them all together and make a coherent, beautiful portfolio for the end of the class? It's your final. It makes sense. So you're going to have to spend time outside of class working on this project. Furthermore, if you wait until two days before the final is due, or this portfolio is due, I can promise you it's not going to turn out well. Never does. And there are always those students that wait until the very end and have an A going into the final and didn't spend enough time on their portfolio and their grade drops. It happens. I don't want it to happen to you. I want you to be working on it. I want it to be great. I have office hours. We can talk about it. I'll redline it. Like I want it to be good. But it's on you. It's the final. It's on you to figure out how to make it a really good portfolio. I do also, we do spend at least two class times talking about portfolios. I will introduce the portfolio. I'll do a whole lecture on portfolios and what they are and what's expected to be in them and all that kind of stuff. So don't, don't feel like it's completely out of left field. Like I will give you guidance. I will get you ready for this. Um, but I want to emphasize that this is a solo project, something for you to work on by yourself that is due at the end of the semester. Uh, in about a month and a half or so, I will actually hand out the official final uh, the handout that's related to this. So you'll get that information at that time. So from now until then, don't worry about it. You don't have to stress. We'll get there. Okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, I think I covered it. Course participation. So this is that other 10%, that last little chunk of your grade as part of the cor course. After each exercise and each assignment, you're required to give feedback to your fellow students. And you're going to do that using the course website's comments section. So you give little comments. Now, there's some requirements as part of this that your comment not be pretty, nice, good work. Like, that, that's not helpful. We need some kind of good, constructive comment that actually helps people move forward. 
So there's some limits when you do the comments. I've imposed them. It has to be at least 25 characters long. There goes all the good jobs. Right? Those are out. Uh, the other thing that happens is if you comment too fast, i.e. you're writing good job or whatever, it'll say, sorry, you have to slow down. So these are designed for you to really give constructive feedback. It should be a sentence or two. Telling somebody how, how something is working really well, uh, how something might be improved. Maybe if you change your color choice, this would be better. Those are the kinds of comments that we're talking about. The reason that I do this, and I think it's really important that you understand that this has a purpose. It's not just busy work for you. The reason that I do this is twofold. Number one, you guys need feedback on your work. Somebody needs to tell you how it's going. It looks good, it doesn't look good, that sort of thing. Hopefully you'll be honest with each other. That's important. It's not possible for me to give you feedback on absolutely everything that you do. I can't do it. There's 30 of you and one of me. Time just evaporates. Couldn't do it. So after all of your exercises, you will get somebody who will write and say what's, what's going well and what's not. That's a good thing. The second thing that's the underlying goal here is that you, as a budding designer, as a new person, have to figure out how to articulate what's working and what's not working about a particular piece of design. So let's say that I did a, uh, well, I'll keep picking on the lecture series poster. Let's say that I worked on a lecture series poster and I posted that poster. You, you as, a, as a fellow student, have to figure out, OK, how do I critique this particular poster? What's good about it and what's not good about it? Is the font choice good? Is it not good? Why? Those things are something you have to learn how to talk about. Some of you have been in, in studio type classes where you've been to a, a final presentation or a review and you've had these guest reviewers come in and they sit around and they drink coffee and they pick on your work, right? Well, they're not actually picking on your work. They're trying to make you better in the process. But they have to come up with, how do I explain to this young student what's working and what's not working? What's exciting and what's not exciting? What do they miss? So you, as a young designer, have to be able to figure out that too. So that articulation of what is wrong or what is good is very, very important. And that's where these comments are really going to help you. So in this class, uh, I think the comment total ends up being around 80 comments for the semester. It's not, I ask you for three for each exercise and three for each assignment. I will remind you as it goes on uh, how this process works. Um, not every exercise has comments because sometimes we all do the same thing and they all look the same and it's pointless to give comments. So I will remind you when those kinds of things happen. Um, it's also not, yes, I'm, I'm saying that's a target, three for each. But if you did six for one and none for the other, you get to the same place. So we'll go through that a little bit more. The other thing that's really helpful in terms of this comment section is if you come into class and you sit down at 7.55 and you turn on your computer while things are getting going, perfect time to do comments. You've got about 10 minutes. Usually I start the class about 10 minutes after the official start time. So I'll be starting at about 8.05 for a lecture. That first 10 minutes, you get your computer booted up, you get your coffee set up so you can like be awake at 7.55 in the morning, and you write a few comments. If you get in the habit, first thing you do, you come in, you write those comments, life is easy. You're always going to be on top of it. If you get to the end of the semester and you haven't written any comments, suddenly having to write 80 comments is going to be really daunting. So you just don't want to get behind. So I'll keep reminding you in the beginning. We'll do them together. It won't be too big of a deal. You won't write any comments today. Next class, when you come in on Wednesday, we'll all sit down. We'll all write a comment together. Okay, so I'll, I'll, get you, I'll get you established for this. So this comments thing is worth 5% of your overall grade, or half of your participation grade. The other half of your participation grade is based on being here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Materials. There's not a lot required for this class, but you do need some kind of a flash drive or hard drive to store your work on. These computers are frozen. Anything that you do to them will be undone when they restart. Some of you have worked in these computer labs before. You know how that works. If the power goes out while you're working, sorry, you lose whatever you're working on. It is what it is. That's how the computers work in these labs. So don't count on anything being there when you come back. That being said, I recommend either a flash drive that's 32 gigs or larger, or a hard drive. A lot of people are moving the route of having just one of those little portable hard drives. Um, it gives them a little bit more space. However you do it is up to you. Flash drives are super cheap now. It used to be like, 
I would ask for a 32 gig hard drive and people were like, oh, that's so expensive. Now it's like you know, 10 bucks or something. So it's kind of irrelevant. You need something like that. A lot of you already have it. I would recommend starting fresh with a new set of space, unless you have a hard drive where you have lots of space. Uh, as the semester goes along, you will end up filling up a lot of this as we go forward. Please be safe, careful to safeguard your flash drive. If you leave it in your pocket and it goes through the wash, it's not my fault. If you sit down in your chair and you break it off in the computer, it's not my fault. Okay? If you go to your car and you get in your car and you drop it and then you run over it with your car, it's not my fault. Okay? All of these things have actually happened to students. I'm serious. They've broken them off in the computer. It happens. Okay? So I'm telling you right now that, yes, you're welcome to come to me and say, oh, my flash drive, huh? Oh. <laughs> Nothing I can do. So, so safeguard your work. You have to keep track of it. Don't lose it. Every time class ends, there's always flash drives left behind. Okay? In the old days, it used to be the old days, like you know, six years ago. It used to be this big deal, like you let, because a flash drive costs money. So you left your flash drive behind and you like lost money and people would steal other people's flash drives because they were expensive. Now it's like, oh, who cares? It's a flash drive. Like they don't cost anything. I remember the first flash drive that I bought, I was in grad school. It's a one gig flash drive. It costs like 150 bucks. It's nuts. Anyway, you, it's cheap. So there's no reason. You don't have to steal them from each other. Nobody wants to steal your drive. Just don't leave it. One of the things that I recommend doing, if you can, attach it to your keys, because it's pretty hard to leave here without your keys. Yeah? One suggestion. Yes. One I suggest is the scan, scan disk Bluetooth. Because then you can connect it to your phone or to your computer, and you can double save your, your file. That's good. That's good. I haven't, I haven't heard that one. We're going to talk in class about backing up your work, too. So next lecture, we'll talk about that part of it and, and how to make sure you don't lose it, even if you lose your flash drive. So i just like to, to give you the doom and gloom speech early so that you know it's not my job to keep track of your flash drive. My flash drives have gone through the wash many times. <laughs> it is what it is. The other thing that does happen to flash drives, especially if you buy the lower end flash drives, is something happens and they break. And sometimes they become read-only. Sometimes you can't write to them anymore. Sometimes they just crap out, for lack of a better term. Um, so just be aware that that happens. It's part of the, the thing. And we'll talk about how do you back that stuff up. The other thing that's nice to have is some kind of a digital camera. My guess is all of you have a phone, which now, you know, back in the days of like Motorola flip phones, like a camera phone was like terrible. Okay, now you guys all have iPhones and, and uh, Samsungs and whatever, and the fo photo quality is really good. So if you have a phone that has a camera on it, that'll work. It's amazing to be at the point where I can actually say that, right? So generally that works. If you have a digital camera or a digital SLR, a higher quality camera, you can use that as well. But having some form of a camera is usually useful. If you don't have any form of a camera, we'll partner you with somebody that does have some form of a camera. Though I think in this day and age, probably everybody has a camera. So I'm not too worried about that. So attendance, this is that other part of your participation grade. This is not an online class. Yes, we have a website. Yes, I post my lectures online. But it is fundamentally not an online class. You're required to be here, just like I'm required to be here. You need to sit in your assigned seats. We're going to pick those seats next class. So when you come in on Wednesday, that will be your seat for the rest of the semester. I don't care what seat it is. I just want you to stay in the same place. It makes my taking role significantly easier. I'll have you guys have assigned seats, and I can really easily see who's not here. If you guys move around, it makes my life awful. So stop doing that. Okay? Pick your assigned seats. If you're really worried about sitting next to your buddy for the class, get here early on Wednesday and pick your seat. Easy. Okay? If you really like a particular seat, you like to sit in the front, you came here today and you're like, oh, guy, that's, that guy's scary and you want to sit in the back, right? you can pick that. Come on in. Grab a seat. You can sit in the back. That's OK. I won't be offended if you don't want to sit right next to me, even though I want to be your friend. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so if you sit in the back, that's fine. Sit in the middle, whatever. Just pick your seats. We're going to have those seats for the rest of the class. It's important that you get here on time. Class officially starts at 7.55. I recognize that there are things like traffic and parking that are problematic. The good news is early class, parking is usually not the big issue. Traffic, yes. School across the street, tends to back everything up. 
leave in enough time so that you can get here on time. I didn't pick the start of class time. Not my fault. I have to be here, you have to be here. So class officially starts at 7.55. I'll start lecture, I say on here I'll start lecture at 8. That'll probably slide a little bit. Okay? I would rather start the lecture a little bit late and have everybody here than start early and have to repeat myself. So I try really hard to make sure everybody's here first. We'll get to the, the next part of that in a second. Um, during that first five to 10 minute period, when you boot up your computer at 7.55, that's when you're gonna do your comments. You've got enough time to deal with comments. You can write good, constructive comments that aren't, nice job, but that are actually helpful. You've got that built in, that's good. You can't leave class early either. So this is another big one. So how, many, how many people have had Daniel Abbott in one of their classes before? A few of you are like, yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay. Daniel is a big stickler about this, and he, he actually has you check in and check out and that sort of thing, and he takes roll twice during the semester, or during the class. I don't do that. I'm a little bit more flexible than that. However, you all have enough work to do to where leaving early isn't helpful. If you're a breeze and you can just whiz through your Photoshop stuff, great, congratulations. My guess is, especially if you're in 121, you have some other work that you should be working on. So use that time wisely. If you're in another design class, 120, 121, 220, any of those other architecture classes, start doing your work for that class in the extra time that you have in this class. Because guess what? I'm still here and you can still ask me questions about that work. You can make that work better. So don't waste your time. Don't run out and waste your time just because you want to get outside of the room. You're here, you paid to be here, you need to stay here. Sometimes your work for this class will take the whole time. It is what it is. Sometimes, in rare cases, you need a little bit more time beyond the lab time, that's okay. I'll let you have that extra time. If you need to go home and work on a little bit more, that's okay too. Um, the other thing is that this class is early in the morning and I recognize that everybody, you know, it's a three hour class and it's, or it's a three hour and 10 minute class. Uh, it's a lot to get through. So if you need to step out, you need to take a little break, it's okay. It happens, you need to take a break, I'm okay with that. Generally, I'll build in a break in between lecture and lab. So I'll take a little break when I finish the lecture portion before I start the lab portion. Depends a little bit on what I'm trying to talk about on when that break will happen. Sometimes it'll be when I turn you loose to actually start working on the lab, you'll take a break then. If you need to get coffee, I understand completely. I have to survive too. If you bring in drinks into the room, please make sure they have a lid on them. The last thing we want is the, the coffee or whatever to spill on top of the keyboard and fry the computer, et cetera. We don't want any of that stuff. Technically speaking, I don't think there's supposed to be food or drinks in here. Shh. Right? We all need it. We all need to survive on it. It's fine. I get it. Just make sure it has a lid on it. That's fine. If you're going to eat, though, just step out and eat there. Not the end of the world. Ten minute break, no big deal. Over the course of uh, the semester, I don't, I don't mind. Hold on a second. Sorry. Okay, so the other thing uh, that I will do, and this is how I keep you honest, is that r some time between the start of class and the end of class is when I take roll. You don't know what time that's going to be. So sometime between the start and the end, I'll take roll. I do that randomly so that you have to stay the whole class. You can't leave. Now you say, well, wait a minute. What happens if I stepped out and I used the restroom during that time? Chances are I know you're here anyway, so I'll make sure you get checked off. Okay? In very, very rare cases, I make a mistake and somebody was here and wasn't here, in which case usually we can work through it and you can prove that you were here. I'm not overly worried about it. It's worked great for many semesters, this whole system. So I'm not overly worried about it. If you have to get, step out and you have to go to the bathroom or whatever, don't tell me. That's great that you have to go to the bathroom. I don't need to know. Right? It's not high school anymore. It's not middle school. Don't care, just go use the bathroom. I'm not worried about it, okay? So bathroom's around the corner. You can use that anytime you want, um, but you don't have to inform me or, or any of that sort of thing. So just, this is a college class. It's like that. You get that autonomy. I'm not worried about it. So this, um, do I have another slide that explains a few other things about this? Sorry. What? Gotta love it when stuff breaks, right? Yeah, that's like really, really broken. 
<laughs> so this is the other thing that happens in a computer class. Is stuff like this happens, right? Where, I don't know, it broke. Hang tight. <laughs> I need more slides. OK, so we'll continue along here. OK, so the other part is that if you miss two weeks of class or more, that's four days of class, you may be withdrawn from the class. And I emphasize the word may. And so this is, you know, the, the first day of class, you have, to, you have to get the doom and gloom out. We have to, we have to explain all this stuff. So it is, it is my strong opinion that students are walked through college too much. People hold your hands and make sure you, you succeed. Okay? Life is not about that. There isn't going to be somebody to hold your hand and make sure it all works out in the end. It's your job. It's you who have to make it work and you have to figure it out. So I say stuff like, you may be withdrawn from the class or you may receive an F for the class. So it would be nice to be withdrawn, but if you think you're doing poorly, if you think you're going to fail the class, if you think you're not going to get the grade you want, you think you're out too many days of class, take yourself out. That's the responsible thing to do. Take it again. I'll be here next semester. We can have class again. It's OK. So that's what I want you to do. The other thing, let's say, for example, that you had a job. My guess is a lot of you have a job anyway. If you didn't show up for your job, would that be a good thing? No, not particularly. What about if you didn't show up for job and you didn't tell your boss that you weren't going to show up? Would that be a good thing? No. What if you did it twice? You probably wouldn't have the job anymore, right? So for this class, it's kind of like a job. All I ask is that you tell me if you're not going to be here. It's really important that you learn to do that. It's about responsibility. So if you're not going to be here, it is a college class. Things do go on. Sometimes you have to go on a field trip for another class. Of course, that's an excused sort of an absence. But it doesn't mean, just like your job, you can just ignore your boss and not tell him or her. So you have to tell me that you're not going to be here. That's really important. All it takes, I give you my phone number, just text me and say, I'm not going to be here today. It tells me that I can go ahead and start the class without waiting for you. It's a really important thing for you to do, and I reward you for doing it. So my formula for the whole grading, the, the participation, you lose points for not being here. No surprise, you're not here. That's a bad thing. You tell me you're not going to be here, you gain some of those points back. You don't gain all of it back, but you gain a little bit of credit back. The other thing is you don't show up late. Being late doesn't work in the real world. In the, in the world of academia, uh, you roll in a little bit late. OK, maybe you get like, hey, make sure you're here on time. Maybe you get that. Not a big deal. In the real world, let's say that you have a deadline for a design review commission hearing where you're presenting some, some drawings in front of a board panel trying to get an approval for a project. There's a real deadline. You have to have your documents submitted by 4 PM on this day. If you come in, if you stroll into the office and turn them in at 4.10, guess what? You don't get to go on the hearing. You don't get to talk to the board. You have to wait for the next hearing, if they'll let you do that. Maybe that hearing's already booked, so you might have to wait two hearings. It doesn't work. You have to be on time. Absolutely, without a doubt, you have to be on time. So if you're late in this class, you get penalized for being late. Seems reasonable. It's not as bad as missing class, but you do get a little bit of a penalty for that. Now, I do recognize that there is traffic, there are accidents, there are, there are issues. It happens. Text me. I'm running late. Hey Siri, text Grant. I'm running late. Whatever. Right? You can do that while you're driving, maybe. Not, but don't get in an accident, because I don't want that. See? <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Siri. Appreciate that. Anyway, the point is, be an informed person. Be responsible for yourself. That's really, really important. If you're missing three assignments, 
in the semester, chances are you're not going to do very well. So you could be withdrawn or you could receive an F. Right? I would like to give you the benefit of the doubt. If you think you can stay in the class and do well and want to stay in the class, I don't want to kick you out. I want you to do well. But be responsible. Think about it. When we get close to that withdrawal date, the 75% way through the semester, I'll send you out an email saying, eh, it's not looking so good for those people that aren't, aren't looking so good, for lack of a better term. And you can decide if you want out or if you want in. But again, don't rely on me to withdraw you. Withdraw yourself. If you came here today and you didn't like what I was talking about or this doesn't sound fun, withdraw yourself. Right? There's people on the wait list that want in. The other thing is that this is fundamentally a college class. Some of you have taken college classes before. Some of you haven't. If you've never taken a college class before, it's different than other kinds of classes. You're responsible for you. I'm here to help you. I want to be here. You should want to be here. I mean, this is, it's not like it's an English class or a history class. I don't know. Some of you might like those classes. I didn't like those classes. I mean, it's not like a physics class either. Um, this is the kind of class that if you're interested in design, you should love being here. You should want to be here. I want you to be here. I want you to love being here. Shouldn't be work anymore. That's the fun thing about college. You can get rid of all that other stuff and you can come to classes like this. So treat it like a college class. Be responsible for yourself. If you need to go to use the bathroom, go do it. If you need coffee, go get it. Let's do good work. That's most important to me. All right. Let's see if it's going to keep working. There we go. Assignment due dates will be announced in class. Assignments are due before class starts on the day that they're due. So I don't want you rolling in here and class starts and you're trying to post your work and not pay attention to what I'm talking about. So if I say an assignment is due on, on Wednesday, it's not, don't worry. But if I said there was assignment due on Wednesday, you would have to turn it in before I started talking on Wednesday morning. If I start talking, it's late. At that point, it's, it's subject to the late penalty. Um, we just said that. Exercises are due at 11 on the day that they're assigned, unless otherwise noted. Every once in a while, I, I say, no, this one needs more time. If you worked, were here, worked all day, and you didn't quite finish what you wanted to finish, and you wanted a little bit more time on an exercise, I'll let you do it. Just tell me, hey, I need a little bit more time. No worries. So late work policy. Like I said about being late and to the class, same thing applies about work. If you were trying to get on a hearing and your work wasn't done and you, turned, you, know, you couldn't turn it in, you wouldn't be on the hearing anymore. It's really important not to be late. I would rather have you turn in something that's not so good. This is like a shh strategy. Okay, so everybody, don't... I didn't tell you this. It's better to turn in something that's bad on time and regrade it for the end of the semester than it is to be late because you can't make up for the late. So the way the late work penalty works is for every class day it's late, we drop 10%. So let's say you got a 95. Your, your work was a 95 quality, but you turned it in one class day late. Drop 10%, it's now an 85. You turn it in two class days late, it's a 75. So it's really easy to see how it goes. Even if you do a regrade or a redo of that assignment, you can't get the late penalty back. The late penalty sticks forever. It's like glue, right? It's like duct tape or something, I don't know. Super glue. Even if you, if you just blew it off and you didn't do it, and you decide to turn it in by the end of the semester, I'll give you 50% for it. That's the, that's the low bar. You can get that. Uh, because I'd rather have you turn it in than nothing, in which case you would get a zero. No good. So um, it, remember, it's on the day that it's due. It has to be before I start talking. So if there was an assignment that was due on Wednesday and you turned it in at 8.15 on Wednesday morning, yes, it's still on the day that it was due, but that's considered late. So you drop the 10%. So it has to be before I start talking, which will probably be at about 8.05. So that's the threshold. It is class days, so it's not physical days, it's actual class days. So if you didn't turn it in on Wednesday on time, you would have until the following Monday to turn it in because that's the next class day for that 10%. But just don't be late and then you don't have to worry about it. Better strategy. Additional guidelines for the class. So there are 30 of you and one of me, or maybe 32 of you and one of me. I try really, really hard 
to give you all feedback and help when you need it. So you're sitting there, you raise your hand, I try to get to everybody. But if you are on the wrong side of the room, it may take me a while to get to you. There's nothing worse than spending the day like this, waiting for me to show up. You're just wasting your time. So instead of doing this and wasting 30 minutes, 40 minutes for me to get there, look at each other around you and say, hey, do you understand how to do this? Because somebody around you might understand how to do it, in which case you can keep going. The other thing that you can do is you can look on the website and you can see, oh, he has this tutorial written up or he has this little video written up that walks me through it. Let me look at that. So you're not wasting your time, you're trying to be productive. I've found over time that a lot of people like to bring the headphones to plug into the computers so that they can listen to the lectures. I have, uh, and I do record all of the lectures for this class and for my other class. It usually takes me a day or two to get the lecture from today actually posted and processed, um, but I have the previous semesters, even if the lecture numbers don't match up, I have what I talked about, and it's usually fairly close. It might not be exactly the same way that I did it, um, but they're usually fairly close. You can look that up and see what I was saying, listen to it, work on it. I've also seen people with those videos or with the tutorial videos where it's a, a little skill broken down into a short, maybe five minute video. Um, I've seen people do a little bit, pause, work on theirs, come back, watch a little bit more, pause, go back and work on theirs. That's okay. If that helps you to learn how to do it, then that's why I do it that way. So be aware that those are all different ways for you to move forward during class. Don't just get stuck waiting for me. But that being said, I have no problem trying to help you. It's just there's a lot of you and only one of me. So I do my best. Uh, so I do record all the lectures and I do post them all. It is entirely possible that the lecture recording crashes while I'm talking, in which case it's not there anymore. Um, sometimes it stops recording. Sometimes the audio doesn't work. It happens. Mistakes happen. I usually have a previous semester that will substitute OK and be fairly close to what I talked about. If you're gone from class, even if it's an excuse, let's say you, um, you had to go to a, a field trip for one of your other classes. Okay, totally reasonable thing to do. Excused absence, no problem, happy that you did it. Go watch the video for that lecture before the next class so you know what I talked about. That's why they're there, so you can get caught up. It also means that I don't have to sit with you for 30 minutes and try to teach you what I taught everybody else last class. Go through, be responsible, do that so you're just as caught up as everybody else. Really important. Uh, just as a side note, the YouTube channel for all of my posts um, is youtube.com slash digital tools for arch. That's where all the lectures show up. So sometimes they get processed and put there, but they don't get cross-linked back to the course website until the next day. Um, you can always go to that YouTube channel and find them. For your class, for the 135 class, everything starts in the 100s. So your assignment numbers are always 101, 102, your exercise 102, 103, 104, 105, etc. Your lectures 101, 102, you get the idea. If you're in 136, or if you have taken 136, those are all the 200s. I try to, try to make it clean. So as you're looking through my lecture page uh, of all these lectures, you see lecture 201, 202, that's not you. So you can skip those for now. Re watching the recordings is not the same as being in class. So you can't just say, hey, you know what, I'm not gonna go to class anymore, I'm just gonna watch because he posts all the lectures. The difference here is that you have the opportunity while I'm talking to interrupt me and say, well, wait a minute, I didn't understand. Those kinds of moments are really important. You need to be able to do that and interact with me. And when I'm doing these kinds of um, lectures, especially when I'm demoing computer skills or I'm showing you how to do something in Photoshop, sometimes I won't be particularly clear. Sometimes I'll have an off day and it won't come out the way I want it to. And you guys will say, wait a minute, that didn't make any sense. By all means, tell me that. It's okay. I'm not perfect. If you need me to repeat something, ask me to repeat it. That's perfectly okay. And by being here in class, you can ask me those kinds of questions. If you're not here, you can't ask me to stop and repeat it or tell me it's not clear. Um, as a side note, all the work you're doing in this class is uh, under a Creative Commons license, which basically means we all share, we're all happy, life is good. Okay, you don't own any copyrights, you can't infringe copyright damages on somebody else, etc. So that's the way the class works, no surprise. It's a college class, just 
it is what it is. I've only had one student in my 11 years of teaching have an issue with this. And I don't see why anybody would have an issue with it. But for what it's worth, that's how we're proceeding. And if you really have questions, you, know, you can ask me later. OK, so I'm going to show a bunch of slides of previous work. Then we'll take a break. And then we'll do your first lab exercise and move forward. So student work from previous semesters. Um, we're going to go through some photography skills. We'll talk a lot about composition. How do we compose elements in a photograph? How do we post-process elements to make them attractive? How do we make colors pop out at us? All of those kinds of things are great skills to learn in Photoshop going forward. Then we'll get into photo editing and combining things that don't belong together. These are the shapes you see in the clouds, for example. Changing scales, adding things to certain people. Sometimes they end up on the creepy side. And sometimes they end up a little bit more on the artistic side. So we'll work through a variety of strategies. Then we'll get into layout and graphic design. This is a lot of InDesign work. We'll do posters. We'll talk about typography, fonts, and how do you make all of this stuff end up being a coherent body? How do you lay things out? What kind of a hierarchy do you establish in a layout to draw people in and make people want to look at this particular poster, look at this particular document, read this book, etc. We'll move into some AutoCAD. AutoCAD's going to be on the basic side, but we'll spend a lot of time talking about layouts and how do you actually get from an AutoCAD drawing into something useful that you can work with. We'll actually take AutoCAD all the way back into Illustrator and do some collage work with it. We'll work through line weights. We'll really understand how to make certain pieces of a drawing pop out at us. We might add a little bit of color, depending. And so we're going to try to get to the point where you can create something that could go on a wall is the idea. Then we'll get into 3D modeling and collage. I've got lots of pictures of this kind of stuff. Um, we'll do the modeling and SketchUp. And we'll do a bunch of the collage work, primarily in Photoshop. And we'll figure out how to make something in SketchUp appear as if it belongs in a particular place. So how do you integrate a building that you might have designed into the context of, in these cases, it's all Yosemite Valley. We'll talk about various views of a building. We'll talk about plan views, elevation views, section views and how they all play in. We'll talk about collaging in people and other elements like birds. And I'll end by asking, what will you create? And I think this is something that is also really important going forward, is that, so here I am in my 11th year of teaching this particular class. That's 22, 21 semesters worth of teaching 30 students. I'm still here and I'm not bored yet. And the reason that I'm not bored yet is because all of you are unique and different. Each class that I come into, you bring something different to the table. You have different interests. You do different things. It makes me excited to see what you're going to create. So I try to give you these skills, and then I really look forward to seeing what you do with those skills, and how do you make them better, and how can we as a group become better at what we do. You feed back on me. I change my lectures. I adjust, et cetera. So everything is set up for the semester, but that doesn't mean it's exactly how it's going to flow. So as I learn more from you guys, it's the noisiest door ever. As I learn more from you guys, I'll adjust. As you learn more from me, we adjust together. And it makes a unique class. And that's a really interesting, fun thing about this kind of a design field. OK, so it is 9.10. We're going to take a 10-minute break. So 9.20, we'll come back, and we'll do our first lab exercise together. It probably won't take the whole class period. That's OK for the first day. Um, but if you need to quickly go get something to drink, you need to use the restroom, now's, now's the time. Yeah? OK, so if you're locked out of your account, you probably have to go talk to somebody in like the admin, because it's probably related to your you know, didn't pay a bill or something. So I would go talk to somebody in like the student services uh, and see if you can get yourself unlocked. Yep. No, there won't be any Revit in here. OK, so as promised, uh, we're going to get started back up again. You will notice uh, during the semester that I flip back and forth between my laptop and the school computer. I try to keep a lot of the demos on the school computer so that it matches up with what you guys see. 
versus the Apple version of the same program. It's sometimes the menu options are slightly different. Um, if you want to work on your own laptop, that's perfectly fine with me versus working on the school computers. Um, obviously, you have to bring your own laptop if you want to do that. Um, I have no problem with it. I can't substitute your own laptop for the school computer. I have to have a seat for you, so it doesn't matter whether you have your laptop or not. You still have to have a, one of the seats for it in the room. Um, s those of you that have been here in previous semesters, you'll notice that when the computer starts up, it looks slightly different than last time. Uh, the reason it looks different is that they put a new image on the machines over the summer with theoretically updated software and uh, you know everything updated as, as appropriate. I can't make promises that everything will work. I did come in over the summer and tried to make sure that everything was working correctly. Um, but we will see as the semester goes on how it works. Um, the good news is we are updated. We're using the Creative Cloud version of the Adobe Suite versus CS6. Previously, we've been stuck in CS6. And those of you that had it on your laptops with the Creative Cloud, the Adobe CC version, you, there was issues going back and forth between the school computers. That should be resolved now because we've, we've updated, which is a good thing. So uh, today, you did get a handout. Uh, it's the Exercise 101 handout right here. I just gave it to you. The other thing that you'll notice is on the back of your syllabus that I gave you earlier in the day, there is a course survey that I ask you to fill out. It gives me an idea of what your skill sets are going into this class, so I can hopefully gear the class a little bit toward you individually. I recognize there is always a diversity of skill in any class. This has no prerequisite. You could come in here barely knowing anything about computers. I understand, but it still helps to kind of know where everybody is. Um, the one thing that I should have added on that survey is if you are an industrial design student, not an architecture student, let me know that, because I'd like to know uh, a lot of the stuff that I talk about is architecture related, though this class is broad enough to be very, very useful to industrial design as well. I will also make some accommodations for those of you that are industrial design students in terms of how they, um, like the lecture series poster, for example, I'm not going to ask you to do an architecture lecture series poster. We'll do an industrial design lecture series poster. So we'll make some adjustments to the class for you guys uh, within the same context and the same framework. So please let me know that on the survey and or remind me as we go forward. I'm guessing you are an industrial design student, right? Yep. So uh, just make sure you let me know and keep me updated on that as we go forward. OK. So hopefully, you've all had the opportunity to turn on your computer and get logged in. The login for these computers is your Insight ID and password. So hopefully, you know what those are and are capable of logging in. Uh, in rare cases, the computers get locked into trying to log into the computer instead of the network, in which case you have to type in a few extra things. So if you're having trouble, let me know. Uh, but most of the time, it should work just fine. When you get logged in, you should see this as your desktop, minus a few things. There's a few admin things on this page. But for the most part, this is what you should be seeing as you go forward. And I'm going to ask you to go ahead and open up one of the web browsers. Personally, I prefer Chrome. Um, but that's a, that's a personal preference. I would love it if you didn't use Internet Explorer <laughs> because it's awful. Um, but you know, whatever, we'll survive. Um, so if you open up Chrome, I want you to go to the digitaltoolsforarchitects.com website, which should look something like this. Now, it's entirely possible on the first day that we'll crash my servers. I, I, they shouldn't crash, but you never know. Uh, it can happen. It used to happen. I don't think it'll happen this time, but uh, we'll, we'll see. And when you go here, I'd like to point out a few things about our home page. So obviously, the home page is, is, is graphic. We've got the little splash screen slideshows of, of previous student work. The menu structure is, is most of what you're interested in. Under the About tub, tab, you guys are always going to be Digital Tools for Designers or Archie 135. I try to make sure that it's cross-linked or A135 or, or something like that. Um, if we go into About, and then Digital Tools for Designers here. You can see that there's a course syllabus, there's a course calendar, and there's calendar feeds for those. We'll talk about the calendar and the calendar feeds next class. But I like to at least point out that they're there for you. As we come over to the lectures, again, there we are, 135. And you can see these are previous semesters. We would be in the fall of 2018. So we can go there, and we will go there in a second. If you did go to the fall of 2018, you'd see that there is a, a post for Lecture 101 which is what we're doing today. Uh, if I went to Lecture 101, 
Oh, I'm already logged in. Sorry. I would get this page. Sorry, I opened a few of these just in case. So uh, we get this little orange bar saying you're not logged in, so you don't get any of the premium content. Uh, this is my way of kind of firewalling the site. There's some stuff that's available to everybody, and there's some stuff that I want to be able to give to you uh, without worrying about you know, restrictions and distribution rights and, and whatever. So once you're logged in, you have access to everything. So it's important for you guys to set up a login. So I'm going to have you guys do that right now. Some of you already have, but we'll do it together for right now. If you click on this login link here or this login in the upper right corner, you will go to a login page, which looks like this, asking you to log in. Most of the time, actually from today on, this is all the only page that you need. For today, if you've never registered for this site, you're going to need to register. If you already have registered in a previous semester, you've taken one of my classes, just use the same account. There's no reason to re-register. It's fine. And for those of you that have done that, uh, today might be a little boring for you. But it is what it is. We've got to get through the first day uh, program stuff. Um, so below that, below this login page, there's a link to register. That register link, if you click on it, will bring up a registration form, which looks very much similar to the login form. It's going to ask you for a username. When you pick your username, please have something to do with your actual name, like G Adams or Grant.Adams or something like that, because I need to figure out who you are. You know, if you if you pick, you know, Super Hot Daddy123, I just, you know, like I don't know if you're the Super Hot Daddy or I'm the Super Hot Daddy. Like it doesn't work. I don't, you know. So, you know, make it something relevant to your name because I kind of have to figure out who you are. Okay. I also ask on that survey that you're going to give back to me to write down what your username is. It's a way of double checking that I have everybody's usernames correct so that I know who you are. So you're going to put your username in, you're going to put your email in, and you're going to put an invitation code down here at the bottom. And I wrote it on each side of the board. It's in all caps. There's one on either side of the board like that. Uh, you're going to type that in as your invitation code. And when you're done, you're going to click on register. Now what this does is it will then send you an email with a temporary password to your email account. So whatever email you type in, it does not have to be your school email. It doesn't have to be your insight. It can be your Gmail account or whatever. That's perfectly fine with me. Actually, I would prefer it be whatever email you actually use. <laughs> um, so you put that in as your email. Um, and it will send you a, a bunch of you are doing it right now. I'm getting all the, the registrations popping up. So that's good. Um, it'll send you an email with a temporary password. If you use Gmail, it's entirely possible it'll go to your spam filter. Gmail tends to like to put it in your spam filter. So if you log into your Gmail account for the school computer, yeah. uh, you have to go to probably the admin department or right the now. student services to get yourself unlocked. Yeah, I would go now because I can catch you up on this stuff okay. over today. OK, okay so once you have this registered, go into your Gmail account or your Yahoo account or whatever email you decided to use. Look for that temporary password, and you will then be able to go back to the login page and actually log into your account. So because today is there's a lot of this kind of programmatic stuff, some of you breeze through this. It's really easy. You're not worried about it. Uh, but I'm going to stop talking for a little bit so I can walk around and make sure everybody got to this point, and then I'll keep going from there. OK, so I think a lot of you have gotten through this. If you're still struggling to get the, the registration to work correctly, that's OK. Uh, we'll make sure all of you get there today. There'll be enough time um, in the rest of the class to make sure that everybody gets registered, et cetera. But I, for, those of, for those students who have already gotten the registration, I want to work the rest of the way through. Uh, so once you, you're able to log in, uh, I'm betting that it will take you to your dashboard, which should look something like this. It may also take you straight to your profile which looks something like this. Now here, if you were to scroll down, you can see some information about yourself. So I have two accounts. I have an admin account for myself where I can see everything. And I have one that's like yours that's a student account. So this is my version of a student account. Uh, so it should look very close to what yours looks like. But when I'm in the admin, I've got a lot more um, options that you don't have. Uh, so here, we've got my username listed as grant.adams. Usernames can't be changed. But then I also, below that, I'm filled out that I have a first name and a last name, um, et cetera. You can choose how to display your name if you want next to your posts, uh, if you want it to be something different. You have your email address, 
we'll get through the rest of this later on. Next class, we'll talk about that. As you come down here a little bit further, you can see under account management that you can get a new password. It'll ask you to generate a new password, which is some random string. We'll talk all about passwords next class. The thing here is that if you don't like this password, you could type in you know, FIDO1234 or whatever you use as your normal password, and that would be OK. Uh, it is telling me that if I use FIDO1234 that it's a pretty weak password. Like I said, we'll revisit the concept of passwords next class, in which case you might be changing your passwords. <laughs> I might panic you enough into doing that. Um, if you have a weak password, like FIDO1234, you would have to confirm the use of the weak password. Yes, I do, in fact, want to use a weak password uh, by checking the box. Um, that is if you want to change your password into some, some other password, et cetera. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that, because I don't really want to change my password right now. Uh, and once you're done with that, you can go ahead and click on Update Profile, and that'll save things like your first and last name, et cetera. If your first and last name are put in here, that will, again, help me figure out who you are, especially if you used you know, Sexy Hot Daddy 123 as your username, which you, of course, didn't use anyway. So um, that, would be, that would be useful. The rest of this you can pretty much uh, ignore. You can change color scheme. You can do, there's a lot of different things that you can choose to change if you want to. Um, but I'm not, I'm not overly worried about you doing any of that sort of thing. So the next piece that you're going to be working on today is we're actually going to have you create your first post on the website. And this is my way of confirming that one, you've registered correctly on the website, and two, you understand the basic concept of making a post. So we're moving on from part one into part two. If the registration didn't quite work for you yet, that's OK. I'll come around and help you with the registration part. Uh, and then you can continue on with part two. But I want to walk through part two uh, so those of you that are ready for it can actually do part two. So what I want you to do is I want you to find an interesting article related to design. If you're interested in architecture, pick something architecture related. If you're interested in a product, pick something product related. If you're interested in landscapes, pick something lands landscape related doesn't really matter. Design is a very loose term. So I could, for example, uh, go to Arc Daily, which is uh, a great website that has lots of interesting architectural projects on it. So something like this, yeah, that looks kind of interesting. Right, and we can see some various pictures. And I can look at, like, hmm, yeah, that's kind of unique, kind of different. I might be interested in making a post on that. If it wasn't something that was interested, you could go back and pick something else. Again, it's not necessarily what the p content is. It's that you're actually making a post. Do spend a little bit of time and actually like, kind of read through what it's about and make sure that it is interesting to you, not just pick the first article that's up like I just did. Right? So pick something that looks interesting. And once you have that, uh, keep it open in one of your tabs. And we're going to go back and write a little post about this particular project. So I'm going to go back to any one of my pages. In this case, it was the profile page. And I'm going to go in to New and then Post. This is how you're going to make your post. So uh, this black ribbon at the top of the page, there's a little New button with a plus sign next to it. I'll click Post. And it will bring up the Add New Post. It gives me a little red bar here saying, this entry has no featured image. You have to set one before you make your post. So we'll deal with that in a second. It's also giving me some kind of an error about uh, opt-in to a newsletter. I'll just say do not allow. Sorry about that. Uh, let me go back to new and then post. And there we go. That's gone away, but I still have no featured image. We'll solve that. So the article that I picked here was The Fortified Cavern. So I'll copy the title here, The Fortified Cavern. And I'll go over to my post, and we'll call it The For Fortified Cavern. And maybe I'd add that this is uh, exercise 101, something like that. And so that is then the title of my post. Below here, I've got where the content goes. And this works very much like any word processor. Essentially, what I put in here is what I'm going to see. So as I start to type stuff, this is what I would see. Uh, I might say, you know, this is an interesting
you guys are not going to write blah, 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 but you get the idea. Okay? So I have the ability, just like in any word processor, to take a particular bit of text. I could make it bold. I could make it ita italicized, etc. So I have lots of flexibility there. I have justification options, just like uh, any, any word processor. There is also a, uh, let me see if I make sure the right one. I think it's this one. Yeah, there is also a little set of boxes at the end. If, if I were to click on it, I can get more options like indents and uh, strike throughs and colors and that sort of thing. So again, all of that is, is certainly optional. Now the next thing that I might want to do is I might want to put uh, a link to this particular article in. So I'm going to go back to my ArcDaily site here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy the address for it. So I'll right click and say copy. And I have two ways of adding this link. I could say, let's say link to article. And I could add a little indent here. Let's put a little bullet point. And I could paste in the link to the article, something like that. I could also just link. I could say link to article, and I could link that piece of text either way. This isn't actually a clickable link just yet. In order to do that, I would need to select this text, click the chain icon right up here, which allows me to put in the, the, the link. It automatically fills it in because it looks like a link, in which case I can confirm it. But I could just as easily take this piece of link here, and I could link that and paste in that long website address and make that linkable as well. So that's how you would do a link. We're going to end up doing links, fa links fairly frequently. The other thing that we're going to end up doing is setting the featured image. And again, if you guys have been in class with me before, this is like really old news. But for those of you that haven't done this before, we need a, an image related to this particular structure. So ideally, I would make this a little bit larger. And then I might right click and save image as. I'll just put it on the desktop for right now. And I'll click Save. And that should have saved the image. There it is. So if I go back to my post here, and I scroll down on the right side all the way to the very bottom, there should be something called Set Featured Image with a little link. I'm going to click on that Set Featured Image. And if again, if you get a little lost or this seems a little complicated, the first couple times it's a little daunting, and then all of a sudden it'll be really easy. So I promise we'll get through it. And if I need to walk you step by step, it's no problem. I'll help you do it. So I've done that. I've clicked on the set featured image. I need to upload the featured image. So I'll click on Upload Files, it's the first tab. I'll click on Select Files and go browse for that particular file. So I'll go to the desktop. There it is. And I'll say Open. And it will then upload that image for me. There it is. Now I can use the blue button down here at the bottom to set the featured image like that. And you can see that the featured image now shows up right down here. So I have my featured image set. I'll scroll back up to the top. So thus far, I have some text. I have a little bit of a description. I have a link to the article. I have my featured image. I have not actually turned in my work yet. I haven't published my post. I need to do that. But before I do that, I need to categorize it. And this helps me to find it, and it helps it to show up in the correct place on the website. So on the right side, we have our first option here is Publish. Below that, we have Format. We'll ignore those first two. The third option is something called Categories. In the Categories box, we're going to scroll down. And as we scroll down, we're going to find that this is the Digital Tools for Designers class. And we are doing exercises. And this is exercise 101. The most important one to check is the exercise 101 box, so that I know this is your exercise 101. If you check exercises and that this is digital tools for designers, that would be nice, but it's not required. So I do definitely need you to have exercise 101 checked. So there's exercise 101. It's checked. At this point, I can scroll back up to the top. And I'm ready to turn in this particular post. And I'm going to do that by clicking this Publish button right here. When I click on the Publish button, it's going to actually publish the work. 
There we go. I'll see a link here at the top that says post published and sending emails to subscribers. View post. We can also see here that it was published on August 27th of 2018. That would be today. Now that it's done, I'll go ahead and I can click on View Post. And we can take a look. There it is. There's my featured image. It shows up. There's the text that I wrote about it. Down here, there's where people can comment on this particular piece of work. So we'll go through all of that. Uh, next class, we'll deal with commenting next class. There's also something here that says about the author and whatever. We'll work through editing this next class as well with your little profile. So there's my first post. If I were to go to the website itself and I were to scroll down a little bit, the next option below this little header splash image is our student work section. I just made that post. It's now the most recent post on the course website. As you guys make your posts, they will show up here in chronological order and mine will move over and over and over and eventually it won't show up anymore on this home page. If I were to click on more student work, I'd see more of the student work in larger formats in reverse chronological order. You can see a bunch of posts from last semester of, of things that people did at the end of the semester. If I wanted to be more specific about these posts, at the top here, I can go to the student work section I could go to Digital Tools for Designers, that's your class. I could go to Exercises, and I could choose Exercise 101. That's the exercise we were working on just now. If I click on Exercise 101, these are all the posts that have been made for Exercise 101. And again, mine was the most recent post, therefore it shows up first, because they're reverse chronological. So you can see all the posts that people have done in previous semesters going back forever. We can also see all Exercise 101 work. So this shows you, I think, the most recent 30 or 40 posts. So if I were going to write comments, and again, we'll go through this next class, I would go here and look through these and then write a comment about one that looked interesting to me. And we'll, we'll talk through that next class. Since we're here, I'll point out that under our student work exercises, all the exercises that people have done in class show up here. There's a list. So you could pick any one of these and get, oh, I wonder what people did on exercise 109. And you can see all the work that people did on exercise 109. So it's categorized and easy to find. You can also look under student work and see what did people do for assignment 101. All right? So there's people's assignment 101s. There you go. It takes a little while to load sometimes. And we can see what various people did for that assignment. So continuing with a little bit of the, the, the tutorial of the website now that I made that post, um, as we go across, we already did lectures briefly. This would be uh, our semester, fall of 2018. There's lecture 101. Once the lecture is processed, there'll be a video right here where you can actually watch the lecture. Um, you can see it says lecture not available yet for fall 2018. Check back soon. Below that, we have previous lectures. So if you really wanted to watch me introduce the class again, not that you necessarily would on this particular lecture, uh, these are all previous semesters. So there's fall of 2017. You can see that there's a strike through on spring of 2018. Something happened and the recording didn't work. So that happens occasionally. This spring of 2016, the evening section, that one didn't work. But a lot of them are still here. So if you really wanted to see one of these, you could actually click on the link and it would take you to YouTube. And there would be the introduction. So they're all there and available for you. Below that, I have lecture downloads. These are the actual slides that I show in the lecture. So if you want to see the slides or you want to download a PDF of the slides, they're here as well. I give you two versions. The first version is just the slides, one slide per page. The second version is four slides per page, so it's a little bit easier to see. There it is. It takes up fewer pages. That's everything that I did and talked about today, should you want it for some reason. So every lecture should have those links. And if it doesn't, let me know, and I'll update them and make sure that they do. Sometimes there are other lecture notes, other notes, other links that I might find relevant. That would show up afterward. In this case, there's a link to the course syllabus. So you could go to the course syllabus. It's the introduction course. It's not a surprise that it would be there. Um, really quickly, I will show you. Um, let me show you one of these lectures just so you can see 
eventually they'll look like this, where there'll be a recording. This is the recording that you can actually watch. It'll be embedded. So they'll all turn like that. Uh, this one has a few extra things. There's a tutorial video that you can watch. So there's a few other things. So I try to, to group everything together related to uh, each lecture. So we did lecture 101 today. As we go over to the next tab, this is the tutorial section. We, we will do some of the digital life stuff next class, and then we'll move into Photoshop. These are categorized by the various software programs that we'll, we'll be working with. Some are for the other class, the 136 class, but they're all from the same website because they're all kind of cross-relevant to each other. Uh, when we get to the Photoshop section, for example, um, here's a bunch of tutorials relating to Photoshop. And on any one of these, if I were to click on it, it would take you to a page. That So this is Photoshop 1.2. This is Levels. And I have a video that walks you through how we deal with le levels. And then there's also a step-by-step -step with little images that show and, and, and uh, identify certain key elements. So on any one of these, there's a bunch of tutorials. If we went into the Illustrator section and I went to, I don't know, let's go to one of the complicated ones. Let's go to Complex Copy Mask from Live Paint. Here you go, this one's a good one. Right, so there's a video and then here's a bunch of steps going through that walk you through how to do this particular skill. And we'll talk through them and, and whatever. But these are all the various skills that we're ultimately going to be learning. At the very end, there's something that I call assemblies. This is where we might take various pieces and put them together. So here, for example, if I did the uh, SketchUp Photoshop sections one, this is the step-by-step. -step. There's a bunch of images. But notice that within this one long tutorial, there's links out to other smaller little bits. So it's cross-linked at the end. We'll get to these at the end of the semester, but I at least like to point out that they're here and they walk you through uh, how, how to do certain things. So that's all under the tutorial section. Next piece over is the exercises. This is where we started today. If I went to exercises and I went to 135 and I went to fall of 2018, which is this uh, semester, here it is. We have exercise 101. This is what you guys just did or you're working on right now. And here under exercise 101, the text here is exactly the same text that you received in your little handout. So it looks exactly the same. It's just not a paper version. The difference is that links are live. So when I ask you to log into email or whatever, uh, all of those links exist. Furthermore, at the very bottom, there's a download the PDF of Exercise 101. This is the actual handout that you received today. I don't keep handouts more than the day. So like on Wednesday, if you came in and you said, hey, can I have the Exercise 101 handout? I'd say no, because I, I recycle them at the end of class. If you miss class, you can go here. You can print your own. If you need another copy, you can print your own. Make sense? So that's our Exercise 101 uh, page for today. And we're almost through it. I'll come back up. Under assignments, right now, it ends at spring of 2018. There isn't a fall because we haven't had an assignment yet. That'll get updated as soon as we have our first assignment. Um, resources, these are other things that are helpful that I'll point out as we go along. Um, and so I'll explain those and when they're relevant. But they're there, but they don't really fit in any particular category. We already talked about student work and ultimately the login. So this is all of your the front side of the website for you to have access to. The back side is the dashboard side, or where you make your posts. We did make our first post. But I'd like to point out one other thing, and that is that on the left side here, there's a category called Posts. And I can go to All Posts. When I do that, I should see all the posts that I've made. So if you did that right now and you've already made your first post, you should see just one, this one, that was posted. I've used this account longer, so obviously I have more posts that, that have shown up. So these are the other posts that I've done. Uh, and ultimately, you guys will have lots more posts that will show up here as well. So that should give you a bit of an overview of what's going on on the website. Today, before you leave, and yes, you can leave early today. I'm OK with that. I want you to finish making this post and, and being able to feel like you've registered and you're capable of making a post. If you need help, I'll walk you through uh, making your post. When you come back uh, on Wednesday of this week, I expect you to have your hard drive or your flash drive or whatever it is you plan to use. Because we'll actually start saving things and, and having to keep track of things. So I expect that to be here on Wednesday for you guys to have that. 
Um, other than that, all you have to do between now and then is just come back to class, assuming you want to stay in the class, which I hope you do. If you're on the wait list, don't leave without talking to me. I'm going to try to make sure that I have uh, space for you and can get you guys into class without a problem. Thus far, it doesn't seem like I'm going to have a problem because there's a, several people who didn't show up on the first day. Uh, but we'll see as it goes forward on that front. Are there any questions about the class? Not so far? That's good. OK, so I'll turn you loose. Please make that first post. I want to make sure you're all registered. Uh, and then after that, you're free to go for today. Come back, and we'll, we'll, we'll start again on Wednesday. Recognize next Monday is a holiday. So you get a very easy, soft start to the semester. Two days this week, and only one day next week, and you get a holiday. So life isn't too bad. Okay, So I'll turn you loose. Do that. I'll walk around and help any of you that haven't made your posts yet. And we'll go from there.